Welcome to the build review of the Italeri Saab Yas 39 Gripen in 70 second scale. I probably don't have to tell you about the Gripen since it's a well known multi role combat aircraft employed in many states. Beside its country of origin, Sweden, it's also used in Brazil, Thailand, South Africa, Hungary, and in the Czech Republic. Fortunately, I've had the privilege to see the Gripen at a couple of air shows, so if you want to see it in action, just check out one of the videos on my channel. Now to the kit. The molds for this kit date back to the year 2000, and I wasn't expecting a high-end kit with a lot of detail. However, the kit comes with decals for four different countries. Even though I opted to build the Czech version, I used one of these Swedish Gripen pilot figures from PJ Production. From what I've seen, both air forces are using the same flight suit. Anyways, I painted the pilot in various shades of Swedish green and used fine brushes for the details. Then it was time for the cockpit. I airbrushed the main colors and again used a fine brush to paint the small knobs and switches. When that was done I proceeded to attach the front landing gear well to one of the fuselage halves. The cockpit section was then mounted on top. Next I added some weight in the nose and joined the fuselage halves together. As expected, the fit here wasn't very good. As you can see, I also had to use filler in the nose section. Then it was time to try something new. I used a fine razor saw to cut out the flaps and slats in order to display them in the extended position. This was easier than expected and I think it makes the Gripen look much more interesting. Unfortunately, joining the wing section to the fuselage created significant gaps. Another problematic area were the air intakes. I used an acrylic filler, which makes it quite easy to remove the excess with a damp cotton bud. Then I had to remove the seam line from the clear part. Later I found out that this was a mistake, because the Gripen indeed has this detonation cord. Bummer. After polishing the canopy with Tamiya's polishing compound, I masked it off with tape. The hut was painted clear green and I fixed it in position with white glue, just like the other clear parts. Prior to applying the primer to the Gripen, I upgraded the pitot tubes with brass tubes to enhance its realism. Additionally, the antennas on the fuselage appeared overly large and thick, so I removed some material to achieve a more proportionate look. As a first step in the painting process, I used this template to spray on random patterns of two colors. The purpose of this is to represent a weathered paint job later on. Then I also did some pre-shading on the panel lines. And as you can see here, I had previously created some rivets using a circular saw blade. I did a lot of research about the correct colors and I found that this light grey I had was the closest match for the underside of the check gripen. Then I used this masking tape for curves along the nose and air intakes to get a nice transition to the color of the upper side. Again I tried to find the most accurate color tone and ended up using FS36320 from MRP. I airbrushed it over the upper side of the Gripen in thin layers to maintain a subtle visibility of the pre-shading. In the past I often used too much paint and all the pre-shading wasn't visible anymore, but this time it worked out fine. When all the paint had dried, I removed the masking tape. I had to do a few minor touch-ups, but overall I was quite satisfied with the paints I had chosen. I should have invested more time in smoothing out some gaps, though. 
Anyways, this was just a quick project, so I moved on to assemble the landing gear. To paint the hubs of the wheels I used this circular template as a guide for airbrushing. The next step was the engine nozzle, that I airbrushed in various metallic colors. Then I painted some details like the position lights. One of the final steps was the panel line wash. I just used a dark wash from Emma of Mick and removed the excess with a brush moistened in white spirit. Here you can also see the rivets I created myself. The last step were the decals. I used the markings for the check version provided by Italeri, as well as some leftover decals for the Gripen by Rivel. The placement of the decals was straightforward, so I won't go into detail here. One issue I had was that I didn't have the proper decals for the intakes. Therefore I cut out the Swedish text and just used the rest of the decal. Finally I removed the masking tape from the canopy. The interior had been protected from the paint, but a bit of polishing of the clear parts was required. Again I used Tamiya's polishing compound and the result was great. Last but not least I added the canards and positioned them in the braking position. I'm not entirely sure, but from what I've seen at the air shows, the positions of the flaps, slats and canards should represent a grippen that's just touching down on a runway. For that purpose I also printed out this runway to display the model on. All in all this was quite a fun project, even though the kit is quite basic. I did not invest too much time on scratch building and fancy extras, so there is certainly room for improvement. However, my priority with this model was to enjoy the building process and I did. In the meantime I also completed two more models, so stay tuned for upcoming videos. You can find more of my content on my Facebook and Instagram channels, linked in the description. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave me a comment and subscribe if you haven't yet. Thanks for watching and bye!